you're multiple hours deep into a project and you're running into a problem that's going to take forever to fix and you feel like the only solution is to restart. Or maybe you're staring at a blank screen thinking about what your first action should be and for some reason, you just can't bring yourself to do anything. If this sounds familiar to you, you should consider speed modeling. What is speed modeling? Speed modeling is the practice of 3D modeling with a time limit. It's usually done to get better at working quickly and efficiently. Before 3D modeling was a thing, people were already doing this with traditional art in the form of speed painting. This is treated differently from sketching because when your time is up, your work could be considered finished. The idea is that it helps people not overthink while working and allows them to get started more easily. A common thing creators talk about is having trouble getting started, staring at a blank page, or deleting the default cube in as many ways as you can think of. This is the type of overthinking speed modeling or speed painting is trying to eliminate. A question I hear people asking artists constantly is, how do you get your ideas? Realistically, you're never going to know exactly how people come up with their ideas, but the next best thing is getting better at starting projects. By removing the stress of getting started, you'll be able to work on more projects where your ideas will naturally come out. Okay, so you know what speed modeling is, but how does it look in practice? Well, the way I speed model is by live streaming character modeling every Tuesday. People recommend characters for me to model, and I spend a few hours modeling, texturing, and sometimes rigging them. I don't set any hard time limits for myself, I just try not to spend too long on any part. As soon as I start to get finicky or overcritical, I try to move on. My goal is to get the best result in the shortest amount of time. The best bang for my buck, so to speak. If you want to practice speed modeling, there are plenty of ways to start. For example, if you're trying to get better at modeling, you could make a list of household objects. Maybe start modeling the ones that seem more simple and work your way up to the harder ones. You could set a time limit for yourself if you feel confident, but it's not necessary. Try to keep things simple, get the basic shapes down, and don't get hung up on the small details. If something isn't going well, starting over isn't a big deal since you haven't put a lot of time into it. You can even skip the prompt if you want. The stakes are low. So have I seen any benefits from doing this? Yes, definitely. A lot of the benefits are directly from repetition. I to inset, E to extrude. When you do the same thing over and over again, you tend to get faster. E to extrude, S to scale, E. I feel like my muscle memory has gotten a lot better from using the same shortcuts all the time. I to inset, E to extrude, E to extrude. My problem solving ability has improved from encountering the same problems. When you go fast, you run into a wider variety of problems more often, which is actually a good thing because it forces you to confront them and find solutions or figure out ways of avoiding the problems altogether. I like to think of these problems as mud being tracked into your house. You can get better at cleaning it up, but the best way to keep the mud out is to stop tracking it in. Speed modeling also allows you to get used to a workflow more quickly. For example, the more characters I model, the more I notice I'm taking the same steps to complete them. Focusing on big shapes and proportions, moving on to details and clothing, and ending with textures. It's usually the same steps in the same order, and I didn't plan it consciously, it just came naturally from practice. The speed that I've gained helps me get my ideas out way faster, which means it's a lot easier to express myself. Sometimes I'll quickly make a simple version of a character before making the final version as a way of seeing if the shapes look good and if the process works. It's kind of like sketching in 3D. It doesn't even have to be 3D modeling to be beneficial. I take this approach with geometry nodes all the time, making and remaking node trees quickly as a way to grasp a concept or test a feature. Speed modeling can help you deal with perfectionism by getting you more comfortable with finishing a project. Some people spend too long trying to add final touches and feel like they're treading water, unable to finish because it never seems good enough. It can help with the opposite too. I used to have trouble finishing anything, not because I was a perfectionist, but because I got used to only sketching and never seeing my ideas to fruition. I used to draw a lot before I started 3D modeling, and I wanted to make cartoons and comics, but I struggled to finish anything. It wasn't until I started a daily comic that I got better at completing projects. Every day I would draw a short comic, only a few panels, and it wasn't meant to be very good. The only goal was to finish. After doing this for a while, completing projects became much easier. There's a reason there are so many artists gaining success from doing daily art challenges. Although they might not be exactly the same as speed modeling, daily challenges serve the same purpose to many people. Believe it or not, completing projects is a skill that you can exercise. Let's talk about the cons now, because there are arguments against speed modeling. First off, speed modeling isn't for everyone. Time limits stress some people out, and others flourish when they can take as much time as they want. Also, if you're a beginner, speed modeling can be hard to get started with. You might find that you need to learn more before challenging yourself in such a way. 
or maybe you could give yourself different constraints, like trying to model with only extruding and scaling as a way of getting familiar. The obvious downside is that your renders might lack detail if you're always rushing to finish them. I think it's important to look at your finished work and think about what you could do better. This is what's going to help you improve, and sometimes the extra time and effort makes a huge difference. I know when I spend longer on a project that I feel confident about, I rarely regret it. Completing a project can give you a rush of energy or confidence, and this can be a trap for some people who get addicted to it, because not all tasks can be done quickly, and if your focus is purely on speed, then your work might suffer or you might feel like you're not making progress after a while. One way to combat this is to give yourself more time for some projects. Time exercises are common in drawing classes where you might start with 30 second sketches to warm up, get things loose and gestural, but you don't stick to 30 second sketches forever. Eventually, you move on to 5 minute drawings, and then 30 minute drawings, and then an hour or more. And if you're 10 minutes into an hour long drawing session and you feel like you're already done, then you have to assess your work and figure out what you could be spending more time on and how to improve. In the same way, it can be a good exercise to make yourself spend longer on a project. You might end up adding details that completely transform things, like how some characters end up being defined by their accessories, blemishes, or some other small details. I know a lot of artists who do daily renders end up in ruts where they feel like they aren't getting better anymore. If that happens to you, it might be that the time constraint isn't helping you anymore. You can get good at forging knives quickly, but the sharpening and honing are what make them useful. Overall, I think speed modeling can be a great exercise for some people, but you should always pay attention to what helps and what works for you. Hopefully some of you found this helpful. I'm interested in hearing what you all think of this, and if other exercises helped you get better. If you want to get all of the project files from my videos, you can do so on Patreon, where you can also watch my videos early and get coupon codes for free products. I also donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.